So in this video, I'm going to be painting a couple of trees from imagination. Uh, this was started on a stream, and then I'm going to go ahead, speed it up, and do a little bit of commentary on it just to walk through the process I would use. Um, so here you can see just really rough shapes uh, that I'm starting with, a very loose sketch. Uh, you can either do your design process with line or uh, with shape. Um, I'm going to be doing my design process more with shape. So that means uh, creating a layer with a local color for the leaves and then a separate one for uh, the trunk and just getting that kind of blocked in. I can hide my sketch and then I can uh, refine the overall shape. So the silhouette of um, what I'm going to be painting then I'll be able to just paint within those layers and I can add to that as needed. But the idea is I just want to start very simply, um, think about more that overall shape and silhouette and get that blocked in first. Then I can establish uh, kind of my general colors, my, my general lighting, uh, whatever I want there before I actually get into rendering. Um, so that's the process I like to use, you know, starting with the hard brush uh, so it doesn't do any initial blending and just get my local colors uh, established and then uh, shadows as well. Um, that way you can kind of boil your objects down into um, maybe two two colors and, and two values, uh, one representing the light side and then one representing the shadow side. So at this point I just wanted to throw in a little bit of a uh, background value uh, I'm really doing these as just kind of standalone objects, um, meaning I'm not painting a whole scene or environment. Uh, so this might just be a way to um, kind of iterate some uh, ideas, you know, generate a bunch of ideas of different designs for trees, um, sort of concepting out what you want it to look like before going on to doing a final painting, um, that sort of thing. So at this point, I've kind of have, you know, the main forms blocked in uh, as far as like the major shape, the light and shadow. I get that sense that the light source is at the top right. Um, and I'm just thinking about these as simple forms and how I can uh, show the light side and shadow side. Also at this point, even when just blocking in these two kind of colors and values um, for each of these kind of parts of the tree, I am thinking color temperature. So you can see the light side is um, kind of a warmer green, uh, so pushing into the yellows, while the shadow side is uh, more blue green. Um, so really trying to show that temperature shift, uh, which is really important. So once I kind of have everything blocked in, uh, I can actually start rendering. So now I'm showing form, I'm trying to show the dimensionality, uh, trying to vary up the colors as well. On the shadow side, I'm playing around with um, varying up that temperature a bit more, so pushing into the kind of blue-greens more, playing with saturation as well. Uh, just trying to create some visual interest. Uh, there you can see choosing a very blue color for that area, but still pretty dark, and just kind of glazing that over. So this is the process that um, can kind of, you know, really simplify things for you as you're painting, uh, where you just can be a little more systematic as you go through. Um, keep these nice clean shapes and, and layers to work within. Uh, and then later down the road, you can get more expressive with your painting and start breaking that a little bit more. Um, some of what you're seeing is, you know, suggestion of detail. So when I go about painting, uh, I'm typically much less interested in rendering um, exactly everything I see in reality. I like to simplify. Uh, I like to paint in such a way that it suggested detail without actually painting all the detail. And kind of working this way, working very simply to more complex, allows you to work uh, very fast. So you could block out a concept very quickly just suggest that detail and then if it's really working and you want to refine it more you can just keep rendering on that piece uh, so that's the the value and benefit of working that way um, I wanted to call out kind of what I'm doing here I, I grabbed the airbrush uh, I had established kind of the light side and side of these trunks um, but I wasn't really happy with 
the color variation. So I wanted to uh, push that around a little bit more. So using the airbrush, I was grabbing some oranges, magentas, and blues, and just glazing that over just to get some color variation uh, in the trunk. I can work up the detail, reestablish the shadows, but now I've got something a lot more interesting going on there, uh, so it's not quite as monochromatic as it had been. And then kind of with everything established with the first pass of rendering sort of done, kind of showing form, uh, I now want to go in and just sort of clean up the edges of the shapes, uh, give it more of a suggestion of um, kind of leaves, uh, you know, some of the leaves breaking outside of that silhouette, uh, cutting into that silhouette a little bit as well so that we're seeing areas where we can see through the tree, through the leaves. Um, you see that all the time when actually looking at a tree where you're going to see the sky, you know, coming through in certain areas. Um, so that really helps. It's the sort of thing I don't need to put in right in the beginning, uh, but once I've kind of established uh, the look I'm going for, I, I can get that uh, detail in there. And at this point, kind of stepped away, came back, and I'm really not entirely happy with the shapes of the leaves on the middle tree and the right tree. Um, the right tree, it's almost just a sphere, so that could be a bit more interesting. And that middle one feels like it could just be a cube or a rectangle. Uh, so I want to be thinking about coming up with a more asymmetrical design for the leaves. Um, I feel like I did that pretty well for the trunk. Uh, they have some you know, nice change to their directionality, some nice flow to them. I like that, but uh, I need to do the same sort of thing with the leaves. And I think the tree on the left has more of that, so um, that one was kind of working. So all that means is I'm going to start cutting into uh, the shapes I've established, uh, cut away where I need to, and then um, add. So additive and subtractive uh, for design making just to create you know, some more visual interest and make these shapes um, a little bit more fun to look at. Um, some of what I'm doing is uh, utilizing masks. So I'll either use a mask to cut away or I'll actually cut away at the main shape. Um, the main reason for using a mask is that if I decide I don't like some of those edits, uh, I can go back and undo that and it doesn't affect any of the rendering I've already done on that layer. Um, most of the time I'm not really going to use a mask for uh, that type of edit. I'm actually just going to go into that layer and cut away and add as uh, sort of desired. Uh, but I wasn't totally committed to um, some of those changes when I first started, so I wanted to have the option to kind of edit it back. But see, this starts to get a little bit more interesting design-wise. It's now kind of an asymmetrical shape to uh, those leaves. Um, kind of replicating but reversing that shape on that lower set of leaves. Um, but that's going to be, I think, more fun to work with and uh, just look a little bit more interesting than what I had previously. And that's just where you want to be thinking about visual interest with your design, varying your shapes. Um, think about asymmetrical designs. So that's pretty well established. I, I like those shapes. Um, so really at this point, I want to put in a little bit of an indication of ground detail. Uh, not much, but I wanted an opportunity to have some color variation um, in the ground. And so I wanted to have some greens, maybe some yellows, some other little spots of color down there, rather than just kind of that uh, orange to um, violet I was using for the trunk. So just adding a little bit of uh, grounding design for the trees to kind of sit on. And like I said, main reason for that was really just wanting to get in um, some color variation there. So at this point, I, I would say this is, uh, you know, maybe blocking plus, kind of everything's established. Light direction is reading. Uh, so now I can just go in and start rendering up um, the forms as far as I want to take these. 
uh, you know, establishing more of that light direction, uh, getting the shadows built up a little bit more. Um, I'm also going to be building up more of the uh, fill light. So the idea is, even though I'm painting these just on a simple gray background, I am thinking of these in terms of um, being lit by two main light sources. Uh, the primary light source is the sun, so that's going to be a very warm light source. And then the secondary light source will be the sky. So that'll be a, um, you know, a cooler blue fill. So that means when I take my greens, I'm going to push those greens uh, towards the blue uh, spectrum uh, on the shadow side. And then on the uh, side that's lit, I'll push those greens more towards yellows. Yellows and sometimes even oranges, depending. Uh, one thing uh, I see all the time in California, we have a lot of um, euc eucalyptus trees, which aren't native to California, but um, they're kind of all over in this area. And for the longest time when I was painting them, I kept just getting the green wrong. Um, it just kept being too saturated, not looking right. And I finally realized what I needed in those leaves was orange. Um, not really what... I would expect to grab from my palette for, you know, leaves, um, but that sort of did it, uh, that really kind of grounded it in reality. I just wanted to push the saturation a little bit kind of in that shadow area. It's just very lightly suggesting that um, we're getting some translucency as some of the light filters in uh, through those, those leaves. Um, but also what, it, what you want to do is, so, you know, we established our overall uh, shape for these leaves. Um, so either, you know, wh whatever shape we're going for. And, and we think about that as one large, simple form. Within that, and if you study trees, you're going to see this more and more. It's made up of smaller uh, kind of major forms. So start with the overall silhouette that's the largest form and then look for areas where you can break that up into um, medium-sized forms so uh, with this tree we can kind of see how it's broken up into some horizontal stripes so those are the the kind of major forms i'm thinking about um, and it just helps to use that as a guide to establish um, you know your lighting uh, you could just be thinking about that simple form and how it wraps around and then it creates just a little bit more visual uh, interest. So because I had blocked in uh, these kind of additional leaf sections later, uh, they were very simple. They didn't have uh, that same level of leaf suggested detail. So I just wanted to establish that. Um, that way it wasn't just one hard edge uh, along that that bottom section and now I can just start building up those lights build up the lights and then uh, work on that kind of fill light from the sky so push that into the blues and then you know you can work lightly just start glazing over uh, color pick from that And same thing on that kind of deeper shadow area, just uh, suggesting a little bit more saturation where we're getting the light to fill in. And this is what I'm talking about as far as just suggest detail. Um, you know, what you're seeing in this recording is what I did when I painted that uh, piece, which means I wasn't zooming in too much. Um, every so often, if I need to get into the details of something, I will push in. Uh, but for the most part, as long as possible, I like to stay zoomed out because it forces me to use a larger brush so that I'm working from the broad to the specific. And it keeps me from just getting carried away with details in areas where um, I don't need to be working on details. If I push in close, I naturally start getting a smaller brush and I start s focusing on smaller areas. So um, I really like to stay zoomed out and then only push in when, when I'm ready to. So I like the direction of the two trees on the right. So now I'm just going to start working up the one on the left. Um, at this point, because the two on the right uh, were more on the saturated green uh, 
spectrum. I wanted to try and push this other one more into the neutral uh, green area. So I just filled in with a new uh, local color, um, kind of for that mid color, just a much more gray green, it reestablished the shadows, and then just trying to figure out the simple shapes and what the light would be doing. Um, and then just once that was established, I could start rendering uh, form, uh, showing variation. I definitely struggled with this one a lot more than uh, with the others. And I think that was just not having a uh, good reference for this piece and not having a clear uh, direction as far as um, what the medium size forms were. So I like the overall form of um, that that shape, but kind of those medium subforms that make up the tree, I didn't have a good sense for those for this particular piece. So it just meant it was more of a struggle as I was trying to figure out um, how I wanted to establish my light and shadow. So I probably could have started over one more time on that piece just to get that a little bit clearer. Or if I'm really struggling, it's nice to then even do a very quick um, wireframe draw over. That way I can think through what those forms are going to be. Uh, in this case, though, I just pushed through, just kept trying to establish uh, lights, cut into the shadows, and um, just kind of working more by feel to see uh, what was working and, and what wasn't working. And one thing I was seeing that was really bothering me, too, is at the bottom left, there's that branch that comes out and uh, it gets very close to the edge of those leaves and that's creating a bit of a tangent. Uh, so that's definitely an area where I'm gonna want to work it up a little bit more. I'm either gonna wanna extend that branch, lower that branch or um, do something with the leaves. But right now it's, it's like they're pointed at each other. They're not quite overlapping, but they're close. Um, so that's the sort of thing I really want to watch out for and just make it very clear uh, what that that kind of shape delineation is. Uh, so that's something I'll be uh, addressing in just a moment. But I'm always trying to keep out for an eye out for that type of thing uh, when painting. So I was experimenting, what if I just extended that shape? Would that fix the problem? Uh, I still felt I either need it to overlap with the leaves or just create a very clear space between them. Um, so in this case, I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna lower it down, change that angle a little bit. So now there's a very, very clear uh, separation between those shapes, so it just reads easier. And then, you know, I feel like I've taken the leaves just about as far as I really need to uh, for this particular piece. And now I'm just going to render up the trunk a little bit. Um, you know, I'm just like, w when I was looking at this um, a little bit closer, I can see these suggested details. And I just start establishing light and shadow within those to suggest bark, uh, cutting in with shadows coming back with my lights and um, just really playing around with those forms once again trying to stay more zoomed out so that I can get a feel of of sort of twisting trunks branches and stuff without spending a lot of time um, rendering out those details I'm also taking some oranges, uh, just really pushing that onto the underside of those um, branches and trunks just to suggest uh, bounce light that would be coming from the ground where the sun you know, would be lighting things up. Finding little spots where I can take sort of that highlight warm color and um, push it into the branches just to try and show some of those forms are facing up. Some of that light is going to be seeping through the leaves and, and hitting some of those branches.
And then also just working from the colors I've already established that I kind of laid in during the, the block in phase. So I can just color pick from that, push that around a little bit more. Um, you know, there's always that idea with painting the happy accidents. So sometimes you'll have something that you didn't really intend that just really works and is suggesting a certain idea. Uh, and then you just go with it. Take those colors, push them, pull them around. Like I really liked that warmth that was happening on that shadow side. Uh, but then as I push more over, more over to the left, I'm taking that more into the blues. So just having those warms and cools right next to each other uh, creates a lot more visual uh, interest. And uh, for these quick studies, you know, from imagination, that's about it. Throwing just a little bit of uh, lighting on the ground, just so um, there's a little bit of rendering there. Uh, maybe not bringing it up to the same level as everything else, but at least having some of that established. Playing around with, uh, you know, pushing the, the warms and cools. So thank you for watching. I uh, hope you guys had fun kind of seeing how this uh, came together. And what's really fun is like this piece, you know, painting these three trees really didn't take a lot of time. Uh, so doing this kind of experimentation uh, is just a lot of fun. You can work quickly. You can go through a lot of different ideas and, um, you know, just have some fun with it. So now, you know, just wanting to get in last few little color variation details. Uh, it's so easy to just always pick from the same spectrum. So I'm grabbing some additional magentas and oranges and yellows and just pushing those colors around a little bit more, um, even within the leaves themselves, just so that's not all feeling like the same uh, green. And uh, I also wanted to throw in just a little bit of a, a blue background. Um, wasn't really important for this piece, except, uh, you know, within those leaves, when you look at a tree and you see it silhouette against the sky, uh, you just see those bits of uh, blue sky kind of coming through those leaves, uh, where, wherever those gaps are. And I think that really helps um, something to read more like a tree. So that was the only reason why I wanted to throw that in there. But with that, I'll go ahead and wrap things up and uh, hope you guys have fun trying this out yourself. Cheers.